Good day, everybody. Um, uh, my name is Toby Oliver from Bravo Studio. Um, and today I have with me Scott from Comet Chat. And we're going to talk uh, a little bit about uh, how our products fit together. Um, Scott's going to start talking about how Comet Chat works, for, to really to help our users understand about the benefits of it. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about Bravo Studio um, and also how to, how to fit the two together. Um, so um, with that, uh, I'm going to hand over to Scott to, to talk about Comet Chat. Oh, thanks, Toby. Uh, yeah, so the uh, I think the topic for today is definitely um, Bravo and Comet Chat and how those work well together. I think anytime we talk about um, chat, uh, we, we really want to talk about user engagement. And so at Comet Chat, what we're, our, our mission is to um, enrich the uh, user experience and enhance user engagement through chat, um, in-app voice and video and text chat. And so that's really what we've been focusing on a lot over the last couple of years is improving the platform that we offer. So we offer a, a platform, which is a um, service that you can subscribe to and then integrate that into your application to enable your users to have uh, either user to user or uh, group chat. And then also voice and video calls for one-on-one -on -one voice and video or group uh, voice and video calls. And so what we're really aiming to do is help our customers who are producing an experience for their users to keep their users on the platform when they communicate and enrich the experience of those users as they're communicating about whatever the topic is for that specific application. Um, sometimes these are um, community-based apps. So the entire intent of the experience is communication, getting folks together to talk about something. Oftentimes we also have folks who are uh, doing a business application in terms of say a marketplace, um, banking business processes, finance business processes. And so um, the intent is to help our customers keep uh, their users on the platform and wholly engaged in the processes that they're uh, working through. And then also um, ensuring for our customers as well as their users, but um, certainly our customers, ensuring the safety of their users and the data of their users and, and the data of their company. So um, anytime you have a user uh, leave your platform to do something, you, you risk, uh, you have business risk involved in that. And so what we're trying to do is make sure that all the things that a user needs to do can be done um, on platform. So when they need to speak about contracts, um, negotiate offers, um, exchange invoice, et cetera, um, that stuff can all be done and communicated uh, on the platform. So that's a big part of what we're trying to provide for our customers. So again, we offer um, in-app text uh, chat and then also voice and video uh, communication. So. Um, just like a Zoom, a Meet, uh, those types of uh, platforms. So those are joined together. Um, you can offer them separately, but they're also joined together so you can have chat um, within the voice and video call. And then after that voice and video call is over, you still have a history of that chat. Um, so it's a uh, pretty robust life cycle for communications. So that's okay. a lot about kind of chat. That's, I mean, that's pretty cool. I mean, I, maybe I'll ask you, I've been useful for, maybe I'll, I'll just talk, ask a few questions if that's okay, just to kind of understand a little bit about um, the sort of, are there any limitations to Comet Chat? I mean, it's, I think it's a pretty powerful sort of platform, right? I mean, in terms of like, you know, if you want a number of users that can support or a number of channels, because I think, you know, some of the tools out there do have some limitations, but my understanding is Comet Chat's pretty, pretty powerful in terms of what it can provide. Yeah, no, certainly, um, with all the platforms you're going to find, um, you'll find some what I would call uh, limits. I wouldn't say limitations, but limits in terms of um, sizes of groups or uh, rate limiting in terms of number of messages you can send at any time. Um, but we definitely try to extend those limits as far as possible. But in terms of limitations, the platform um, really has two substantial aspects to it that I think uh, provide the sort of limitless capability you're talking about. One is um, we provide a large number of uh, custom fields and custom attributes in our platform. And one of the first ones is, so you send messages on our, on our platform. That's the core of this, you're sending messages. 
And we have message types. So you can send text messages, you can send rich me media messages. And we also have a custom message type. So you as a developer can create any type of message. So this could be very specific to your business use case. And so that allows you to, as I was mentioning, um, enhancing the user experience, keeping people on platform, allows you as a developer, you can take advantage of the standard out of the box functionality and use the message types we have, or you can extend our platform by using these custom message types, which would again, allow you to um, say it was an invoice. So that custom message can uh, have a, any type of payload, but let's just assume maybe you want to do JSON payload and uh, that, that payload could be all the attributes of an invoice. And then you could actually have interactions based on that message um, in the platform, which is pretty exciting. So, I mean, is that, because I think one of the things that always impressed me about Common Chat was, was the extensions, which I guess this is kind of connected to, right? A little bit. I mean, I, I think maybe you could talk a little bit about some of those extensions, because some of them are really, are really sort of differentiated from other products, you know, I mean, like uh, real time translation and, and sort of, I think also you have some great um, uh, stuff around, you know, removing profanities and sort of filtering out some of the content, which would be great for some users. Yeah, so um, the second aspect of sort of the, the limitless nature of the platform is extensions. And we actually take advantage of our webhooks. Um, we already have uh, implemented a few webhooks for um, before and after messages. Before meaning before you deliver the message to the recipient. And after meaning the message is now wholly committed, uh, has been transmitted, but you want to do something sort of post-processing on that. And so our extensions take advantage of those webhooks as well. Um, we're actually uh, in the process of uh, extending our uh, webhooks to increase the number of webhooks. We're uh, very shortly going to be releasing the presence webhook. So that'll be a webhook you get every time a user goes online, offline, adds a new connection from a device. So, so they're connected on their PC and then they connect on a mobile device. Uh, you get events for all those aspects. And so that allows the developers to tightly integrate with our platform, even if it's not through our extensions. But so then, as you mentioned, our extensions are built on top of these same webhooks. And um, I, I do think one of the more powerful set of these extensions that you mentioned is our moderation extensions. And so if you have a, a use case in which you're connecting two parties together and you are concerned about them sharing sensitive information, maybe it's social security numbers, phone numbers, addresses, um, yeah, you can filter out that information using our data masking, well, our, our uh, moderation filters, our data masking. Um, we also have in-flight message moderation, I think, which is a pretty unique and significant function, which is those messages basically get held up in a queue. And then you have an active moderator who gets notified. You can have them also live moderating if it's a high traffic uh, system. And we have a dashboard, which they'll see all these events coming through. And they can either uh, modify the message or pass the message through or drop the message, depending on wow. uh, the situation. So it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. So we also, you know, beyond just the extensions, it's used in the extensions quite heavily. But um, as I mentioned, the custom message types, all of the entities in our system, such as users, apps, groups, roles, messages, they all have um, tags and custom metadata that you could add to those. So if you needed to integrate those aspects into your system more tightly, you can always tag those to, um, we have these use cases in which um, it's very specific to the business. Let's say um, you have uh, preferred parties, let's say. So uh, maybe it's a broker in a marketplace and that broker is a preferred broker for one of those other customers. You can start to add tags and metadata to these uh, aspects within the messaging system so that you connect those parties together uh, with preference over other parties. So our system allows you to add that kind of rich data about your business use case deep into our system so that the functionality of our system matches the experience you're trying to provide for your user. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's, I mean, so, I mean, from our side, I mean, part of the reason that we uh, we thought comment chat was a great thing to integrate with was it was kind of that flexibility um, and the way that Bravo works is that um, we try and give people the power that they can kind of 
connect and do other things with, but also trying to make it enable them to move very quickly to at least get up and running very fast. So you kind of have the bit of best both worlds, right? They were trying to give you the flexibility, but also the speed, not necessarily ease, but speed is really where we try and help out. So maybe, maybe this is a good time for me just to kind of just talk a little bit about how Comet Chat fits into working with Bravo. Uh, if I, I just show everybody how to do that. So I'm just gonna share my screen. Uh, let me do. Sure, and Toby, while you're doing that, I've mentioned that um, you know, Comet Chat has varying levels of integration. So if you wanted to get up and going very quickly, we have a chat widget, which allows you to integrate with just a single line of JavaScript. But then if you wanted to uh, deepen the integration, we have UI kits, which is a set of rich components you can integrate into your UI. And then if you want to make a purely custom implementation, you can use our SDKs and our APIs uh, to get a, a more full and rich. Uh, so so I mean, that's really where Bravo fits in. I mean, so, you know, you've obviously got lots of ways of helping people. Where we try and do is coming from particularly helping people develop mobile applications. Um, you know, they want to have the sort of the, the deep or the, the, the deep proper connection, but without necessarily having to do uh, any development work um, on the mobile side. You know, they might have lots of connections to do on the back end, but really what, what we try and do, and so what we've done is we've connected, I think, with your UI kit and we've built it into Bravo um, so that people have can then build out their application um, uh, in, in Bravo and and just drop in the, the, the connection. Let, let me just talk you through how it works. So, um, the way for the people that haven't seen Bravo much before, Bravo works by really taking, starting from a Figma design. We also work with Adobe XD, but these days it's all pretty much the same thing. So I'll just talk about Figma for now. Um, all that happens is, and in the same way that you'd have this for pretty much every application, you have a series of screens. Um, you know, you have all the prototyping on there, talking about the navigation, but everybody starts pretty much when they're developing an application that they'll, they'll well, they flesh out the workflow in a tool like Figma. What we do in Bravo is we actually take um, the, the Figma design as it is with all of the uh, navigation. And if you notice, there's a few like annotations on some of these things, um, like asset icon, login page. Um, and actually we've got some special ones which we've done for um, Comet Chat uh, for these different screens here. Um, and what all we've, we're enabling here is either a group messaging, group chat, or user to user chat. And the, the beauty of this is, is it allows us to basically say this screen is going to be driven by the UI kit of Comet Chat. Um, and we connect the, um, the user ID to uh, the login that the users had. And so we kind of do all that back end work for people. Um, and then and then connect it to the Comet Chat uh, UI kit. So basically, this screen will then become completely driven by Comet Chat, and then connect to your backend systems. And the, and what we do is, you know, as long as you got those annotations on, um, you can literally take the URL for the Figma design um, and go to uh, Bravo. This is Bravo now, and then just pull it in. So you take your figure, figure design. You say, I want this to have chat on this screen. Um, um, log in here, and then. I, I could now, that would now work. Um, you know, the, the things I would need to do is obviously in the, um, oh, sorry, let me get to the other one I'll show you in a second. What you need to do is uh, in the integrations under chat, we just have to have the connection to Firebase to control the login authentication, and which just pull in the config there. And then obviously the three pieces for the Comet Chat, you know, your app ID, your region and auth key. And with those pieces in place, then the app works. And we can then have, you know, real-time chat either in the group or in the user to user. We don't actually, we haven't integrated the video or audio yet. That's something that's going to come a bit further on. So we're still waiting to do that. But what's nice about this is it kind of gets get that fully mobile experience with, you know, natively that can be put into an app store incredibly quickly. And actually one of the things that's really, that we're seeing is a lot of people, particularly content creators, um, you know, or people who want to add chat to their application, you know, with a few annotations and dropping a screen in, they can bring your tool straight into the platform, uh, which is great. I mean, they can open up a whole lot of easily integrating chat without having to do any sort of strictly coding. It's merely configuration and, and a design piece, which makes it really easy for them to get going. Yeah, Toby, what I find really exciting about the integration you guys are doing is that 
we offer, like I mentioned, the widget, but the widget is pretty vanilla. You can style it a bit, but um, you're going to get a very standard experience. It's going to be the same out of the box experience where um, the chat experience is a list of users, a list of groups, and a chat with a user. And, um, if you want to use our UI kit straight out of the box, it's going to look a lot like the widget. Um, if you want to take advantage of the UI kits um, in the way that you're doing here, you're going to have to have some development experience. You have to the developer do that. And then you're really going to have to think through that integration. And what you've done is you've taken um, a standard set of user interactions and mapped that into the app behaviors and made it so folks can simply just get their credentials, pop it in and kind of go to the next level without the effort of getting to the next level. Exactly. And actually, what, what, what people really love about this is that they're using the design tools they already know. You know, yeah. so many of the tools out there saying, hey, you can design it in our design tool. It's like, it's going to be a lot of work to get to a design tool as good as Figma and have the flexibility and have the ability to handle styling and fonts and everything else. So we're just leveraging that and trying to and, and kind of being that middle ground of connecting the flexible design of Figma to the sort of power of the platform that you guys have and maybe other people do exactly what they want. So, you know, people can choose. So now they can kind of say, OK, I want to I want to display the list of groups this way or have some groupings here, some groupings over here before they drop into the actual chat itself. So it gets them a lot of flexibility and power and be able able to kind of do a lot more of what exactly how they want the user experience to work without having to get their hands dirty too much. So it's, it's a really great combination. This is why I was really excited to kind of, you know, talk to you and kind of let people know that this is possible now because there's not many other platforms or the, with this sort of combination of, of power with, with convenience. As you were just mentioning that um, when folks want to uh, get their idea out, right? You've got, you've got a design, you've got an idea and you want to get it out. Um, you don't want to have to sacrifice on the thing you put out. And sometimes um, without a platform uh, like Bravo and it integrated with a platform like Comet Chat, you do have to start sacrificing um, the ease of getting it out the door with the robustness of what you put out. And so yeah. this is the opportunity to say, hey, not only can we get it out uh, quickly, right? You've got an idea, you've got a design for it and you can get it out, but you don't have to sacrifice something like chat because you don't have the development expertise to. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's very true. In fact, actually, one of the things that I kind of talk about this, although it's, it's kind of, it's kind of product typing, right? It's kind of you're actually getting the product. Your prototype is your product because the design is there. It's just that normally when you prototype, you end up having really bad underpinnings. But because we're leveraging really solid tools for those underpinnings, your prototype can be at least your first few iterations and further if necessary of your product. So it just means all those iteration steps can be massively sped up and you can really get, you know, MVPs through early versions out to market much, much faster this way by just making advantage of all the power that's out there. Yeah, I think uh, I really appreciate you uh, saying that. I think, you know, regardless of Bravo and Comet Chat, I'd love everybody out there to know about the fact that it's really important to get your product out and try it as fast yeah. as you can. Um, and so the, one of the things with our extensions, I think is, um, you know, having Bravo comma chat, and then the power of these extensions in comma chat is, um, there are a lot of features in chat that you can, uh, enable to increase and improve the experience that the users have in chat. And if you're including chat as a core part of your experience for your users, you want chat to be equal to the experience that you're trying to give them about the core aspect of your product. And so with just a click of a button in Comet Chat's uh, dashboard, you can enable all these advanced features like rich media previews, uh, all of the moderation that we were speaking about. Um, there's actually things like whiteboarding and collaboration tools in there. Um, we also have a bunch of notifications, push notification, email, SMS, and all those are things that you can simply, just like you're seeing here with like, click on the chat button, click the enable at the top, the slider at the top and put your credentials in. We have these integrations with, um, say if it's end-to-end -end encryption, you simply enable end-to-end -end encryption, put the end-to-end -end encry -end -end encryption credentials in and your platform now has end-to-end -end encryption for your users. So yeah. you can uh, continually improve the chat experience for your users and sort of uh, I think you call it product type, uh, your product type, yeah. your, uh, you know, uh, your user experience pretty quickly without going through a ton of effort um, and integrate that across both the app and the chat experience. Yeah. I mean, I think that's just a theme that I think, as you say, people 
you know, in the way that the world's moving so fast, you need to get your ideas out. You need to test them. You need to make sure it makes sense before you, you invest too much in it. And yeah, the, the, the better you can get the ideas tested and the, the closer they are to reality or even be reality. And I think this is this is one of the things I think is becoming more and more prevalent now is, you know, your, your, your tests can scale. You know, so much the underpinnings of the, if they're using the right sort of tools that are flexible, you don't need to necessarily keep rebuilding all the time. You can scale up quite a long way, even you, because if you're using the right the right pieces and in, 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 in what you build. Well, certainly you're talking about scale. I mean, uh, you know, Bravo uh, being able to scale as a platform, but also Comet Chat. You know, our ability to support large use cases is, is um, you know, we we can support uh, millions and millions of users. Uh, millions of daily chat. Um, so uh, the ability to scale the platform is obviously very important, but also you're, you're really, I think, getting at maybe fidelity. Um, and when we're talking about that uh, sort of, you know, prototyping product, getting your, your product out to market quickly, sometimes the fidelity of that is really important. If, if you're, there, there's a nuance to what you're putting out. And if you put it out in the wrong way, even though the idea is good, it might not catch because of the fidelity of what you've put out. And so I think that's something that um, Bravo specifically, and then having the ability to integrate something like Comet Chat in, you don't have to sacrifice, um, you know, speed to market for fidelity and quality, right? So you you, you can get both at the same time. Yeah. That, um, you know, a- you've got a great idea, but if you don't execute it just right, it, it might not, uh, you know, get, you might not get the right signal back from that. And so this allows you to quickly get a realistic, real, full-fledged, full-fidelity product out to market with this deep integration. I mean, that's a really good point. I mean, actually, one of the reasons where Bravo came from was particularly around the fidelity of design. I mean, I think you've probably had a lot of people in product to come across this idea of handover whereby, you know, someone designs all UX perfectly, they hand over to devs, and what comes back is a very different version of what they set out in the first place, right? And, and I think that causes huge amounts of friction in terms of the iteration process. And really what we we're trying to do with Bravo is say the designer controls things. You know, you build the UX, what you put into Figma is what you get out the other end. Uh, and that makes, it saves a huge amount of pain and just means everything runs a bit smoothly. And I think, yeah, as you say, all these things help to improve that user experience and get you a much better idea of what, you know, what, what you want the user to see is what the user actually sees, and, and which is incredibly important. Yeah, and it, I mean, in most cases these days, we, we're seeing that um, I think just due to social changes, the the market changes, that most folks are expecting to have uh, rich communication in their app experiences. It's generally uh, that even in a, in a an application that isn't based on community and providing communication, that folks expect to have some experience in which they can either communicate with the their, their provider or amongst other people who are using the product that they're using. I mean, so much so that even uh, like marketplaces like um, an Amazon or Walmart now, um, you know, they, they're promoting sort of a community around purchasing from them. Mm-hmm. And so um, it's pretty pervasive now that people expect communication in some way in the products that they're interacting with. And if, if you don't provide that through the application, then people are either going to seek it out on their own or you're going to have to provide it to them through when we talk about off platform. So maybe you're going to push them out to SMS or email, yeah. you're going to have to go to WhatsApp. And that's just not one, it's not a good experience for the user. It's just not an integrated good experience. And second, you lose the capability of um, co- so collecting the data on that, not just the actual data of the content of the communications, but did they communicate? Have they closed the loop on whatever that process is? Um, and so keeping people on platform when they're doing that communication is pretty critical to providing that higher level of user engagement that we're going for. So the fact that you can do that again, where you drop in uh, your Figma design and it's already got that aspect of the chat available to you sort of as a toolkit here and you drop it in and you have it ready to go. That's really fantastic. Yeah, I say one thing I always pick up on and it's particularly bugbear of mine is like that I think in the way that we work today, a, a, asynchronous communication is incredibly important and, and chat really delivers that. I mean, you know, so often people will, as you say, go off platform and there's still a lot of people trying to, trying to do things with call centers and stuff. And I mean, it has its place, but 
you know, a call center user using a chat application can handle multiple people simultaneously, whereas you know, with with voice, it's one to one, and it gives you it gives you much a it gives you a better user experience, but also it just means you you can do more with less, right? Which is huge, hugely valuable, particularly in the economic environment we're in right now. And I think so. I think having in platform communication, particularly something that lends itself to an asynchronous way of communicating, where you don't necessarily have to respond immediately, but you have that history of what's been said. It's, 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 I, mean, I don't know why everyone doesn't do it, to be honest. It's, it drives me crazy when I can't chat to people often in, in my products. Yeah, you're, you're talking about the asynchronous nature. And I recently, um, you know, I, I don't know if there's a, a term for the paradigm, but um, it's like bimodal uh, is basically asynchronous, except when you want it to be synchronous. So, yeah, uh, okay. So, you know, you want, you want to be able to say, oh, no, it's here, but I st- I'm, gonna, I'm not going to come back looking again and again and again and hope you're here, I'll leave a message. But then if if I'm called in to have the conversation, it, it turns into a real time conversation. Yeah. And um, that's the kind of experience you get with comment chat in that um, if the person's not online, you can still leave messages. Uh, and then if uh, they come online, you can get a notification, a push notification that says chat's available and pop in and start the chat immediately and have uh, real time can we communicate yeah. with that person? Super nice. Very good. So, what, one question I've got, um, Scott, is you know, what's next for Comet Chat? What what interesting things have you got lined up that we need to be thinking about how we what, what we should integrate with? Because you know, you, you've got some great, great product here, but I bet you've got lots of great stuff that's cooking. Yeah. So, a couple of the big things are, as I mentioned, um, so why a product like yours is so valuable is that. Um, these experiences for users are um, very particular to the product that you're trying to put out to, to the user. So um, depending on what type of an app it is, is it a marketplace app, is it a community-based app, is it a business process app, um, you know, are you doing telehealth? Those experiences are, are really critical to the success of those. And so we realize at Comment Chat that we can provide a nice widget that you can drop in and go. We got a, a UI kit that uh, gives you a real good head start on developing a more integrated experience. But the experience that you want to provide to your user is not provided directly by Comet Chat. It is the experience you are providing to your user and you're using Comet Chat to enable and enhance that experience. And so um, we, we really feel that it's very important to enable our developer community to do that. And so we're doubling down on our webhooks. So we've recently revamped the webhook platform as underpinning of the platform in and of itself. And then we are releasing some new webhooks here very shortly. Uh, I believe they'll be out before the end of the year here. Um, first, the presence. I mentioned a presence webhook. Um, and then we'll also have uh, delivered and read receipt webhook so that you can see when people are receiving messages. Um, and then as we move through the next uh, year, 2023, we'll be releasing a ton more of those uh, extend the um, webhooks. And then um, I jumped the gun there. I'm really excited about, as you mentioned, our extensions. Um, we already have a really good marketplace of extensions. We have over 40 extensions to allow you to really take advantage of this rich, deep experience for users by providing a better interaction in chat. Um, but we also are going to be opening up that platform to allow folks to provide their own extensions onto the platform. So that extensions the marketplace will double down there. And then um, I think another one that uh, folks uh, should be very excited about um, is our ability to provide our UI kits um, in a much more developer friendly way. So right now our UI kits are um, really powerful. We got a broad set of components. Um, we're now producing those in a standard library package you get from your package manager. And so there's not as much fiddling for a developer to fiddle with before they uh, take advantage of those. And I think that's probably what uh, makes it easy for folks to use a platform like yours is they don't have to fiddle quite as much. So the, 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 uh, not really trying to reduce the fiddling as much as possible. It's just to get, get your the stuff out the door is, is the key thing for us. I guess, well, I mean, I think what I'd love to do is, you know, when you start looking, it'd be, it'd be really cool to do some features that kind of really leverage both things. It would be nice to be able to 
you know, kind of connect the web hooks back to notifications in the app. So people can actually do some really crazy stuff around changing app behavior based on the web hooks, but done it in a really fast way. I mean, we're quite keen on trying to really show off the power of, you know, all the platforms we integrate with by doing some great use cases of, you know, look, look what you can do by hooking these things together and look how crazy you can start building some really quite complex behaviors, but really easily. So it'd be great to keep talking about, you know, as things come available to do something like that. A hundred percent. Yeah, I think um, as you're mentioning, like notifications and push notifications and, um, you know, that's that uh, we get this question quite a bit and it's not one that we have currently solved with. That's probably the space that you're in, which is um, push notifications and deep linking. And so we handle the push notification from chat, a chat perspective. So we can send a push notification based on certain uh, aspects of the chat. You've missed some chats, there's high activity in some chats, whatnot. But the behavior that the app has after the push notification is received by the user is all on the application developer. What do you want to do with the push notification? Absolutely. Take them directly into chat. Maybe it's, again, I mentioned that integration of like an invoice. Maybe you want to take them directly to an invoice. So um, that part is where it's critical for an app developer to make some of those choices. And I think that's where a platform like yours comes in very handy is that um, if you don't have a developer to do that kind of thing, you've got to take care of it somehow. And, and platform. I mean, uh, deep, deep linking was one of the earliest things we did. And so, you know, you can get right into the heart of the application from, from one of those deep links. So, you know, by hook by kind of closing that loop and having those, in, those notifications go back through and back into the app, you can create some great behavior. So, yeah, I mean, I think there's some really fun sort of use cases we could, we can build out just using the, the two platforms that require very little actual proper development piddling to, to, to actually get done. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be kind of fun. Very good. Well, look, I mean, I think I think we're covered off all the topics I wanted to do today. Um, uh, so maybe it would be good to hand over to Scott to do a quick demo of uh, of Chroma Chat and show off all the, the power of the platform. Over to you, Scott. Sure, I'd love to walk you through a demo real quick. Let's jump right into the Chroma Chat application dashboard. The application dashboard allows you to configure applications, create and configure applications. And I've got two applications already configured here that I can use for demonstration purposes. And so we can jump right into the demo app and I'll show you the actual application here uh, working in a moment. But the first thing we'll notice is we have lots of analytics and stats that you can look at. So both current usage as well as analytics over uh, historical usage. So we show uh, current users online, active users, and we have historical data over uh, larger time periods. It's very useful for monitoring the application um, over time, as well as users, especially for uh, use cases where you have open usage. So if people can sign up, download an application and sign up, visit your website and sign up, and you wanna uh, keep a track of the amount of utilization you're having of chat, you can do that here. Um, so not only that, but you can manage users, groups, and roles. So you can add and manage users here. You can create groups and associate users to groups here, and that allows group chat. And then also Common Chat comes with a fine-grained set of permissions that you can manage through various roles. So you can create custom roles and uh, configure the permissions for each of those roles specifically so that your users have only specific sets of capabilities within the system, creating messages, or maybe they can create messages but not delete a message. Uh, maybe they can uh, send messages but not reply to messages or um, not create groups, etc., etc. So uh, not only do you have control over users, groups, and roles, but you actually can uh, control chat as well through the dashboard. So not only can you view chats through history, so let me see here if I can just uh, pick um, that here, search with me. So we can see chat history. Um, you can actually uh, kick users, uh, ban users, and delete the messages. So um, those things are all possible through the dashboard, as well as in flight message moderation. So those were historical messages, one that had already been sent. So you can sort of manage those messages after they've been sent. The in flight message moderation allows you to intercept the messages before they're delivered to the end recipient. So you can either drop the messages altogether or you can alter the content of the messages as they're in flight. 
Um, and those are special permissions, as I mentioned. Uh, those roles were for your chat users. There are also roles within the dashboard. So there's owners, admins, moderators, etc. And that allows certain folks to have behaviors like in-flight message moderation. And then you can also prevent other folks from being able to do in-flight message. Not only can you look at the chats, but you can also look at uh, calls. So Comet Chat supports voice and video calls as we talked about. Um, I don't think there will be any in this history at the moment. I haven't done any in this demo app, but um, uh, all calls placed, well, you'll see the uh, participants in the calls and the call minutes. And then um, if you've enabled call recording, which is an option, you actually can uh, get the call recording. So that's a voice or a video call recording uh, be in the dashboard here. So uh, as I mentioned chat widgets allow you to do like a low code, no code implementation of Comet Chat. Uh, what I'll demo here in a moment is actually using our UI kits and SDKs, but uh, it looks very similar. Um, the widgets uh, are built on top of the UI kit, so it looks very similar. Um, we've done a little more customization in the demo, but what you can do to customize the chat widget is, first of all, you can uh, customize JavaScript and CSS, so the look and feel and some of the functionality, or if you wanted to add some extra functionality within the chat widget, um, you can use custom JavaScript and custom CSS to customize the look and feel and behavior. But then more importantly, uh, if you modify the settings, you can change a lot of the behavior of the actual chat itself. So you can change what uh, chats users see, you can change the users that they're able to interact with, you can change uh, whether they're uh, able to engage in chats, groups, and users or just groups so you can actually enable and disable uh, any combination of those and then also change the way the ui will render those in what order so uh, there's some customization in there and then uh, an immense amount of customization in terms of the behavior that you can customize in the chat widget and so these are all the same kinds of things that you can customize both through permissions and through using our UI kits and custom code, but you would do that in a code way versus here, um, we just have a whole bunch of set of properties that allow you to drive the functionality and behavior of our chat widget by uh, toggling on and off these behaviors in the dashboard here. So not only do you uh, have the option to integrate to with Comet Chat using the chat widget, but you can also use our UI kits. We support uh, major mobile and web platforms. And you can also, if you didn't want to use our UI kits, which are pre-set uh, uh, UI components, um, you can just use our SDK directly and create your own UI and user experience. And then um, you can also use our APIs both to do chat, so you can uh, initiate user experience and chat APIs, but you can also hit our analytics APIs and also manage applications, create groups, and users, all kinds of management uh, through our APIs. I mentioned earlier our large set of extensions, there's over 40 of those, and you can enable, disable, and configure those through the dashboard here. And so uh, depending on which uh, of these functionalities you wanna to provide to your users, you simply enable and disable here in the dashboard and uh, the functionality will appear to them. So something like email replies, you can enable email replies and then users will receive notification of the messages in their email and be able to reply directly to the email and that uh, reply will then show up in the chat. You can enable just enable polls and those will show up in the UI and uh, users will be able to uh, initiate uh, polls with their in, within a group. Um, smart replies, so users can quickly uh, reply to messages without typing out a whole message. Um, we have a collaboration suite, which allows you to do whiteboard and, and uh, collaboration. I'll actually enable those now and we'll look at those real briefly in the uh, demo. Um, I don't have push notifications enabled right now, but push notifications are pretty popular. Uh, extension which allows you to send uh, push notifications both web and mobile push notifications uh, using the uh, Apple push notification network or Firebase push notifications simply enabling this and configuring your push notification credentials and then a really important set of extensions that uh, a lot of our customers take advantage of um, are the moderation extensions, the profanity filtering, data masking. Um, you simply uh, configure 
uh, what kind of data mask you want. We have out of the box, we have some email, phone numbering, uh, social security number default masks, but you can also add your own regex and uh, mask any of those. And then you can choose to mask them, which will just simply mask them out of the messages. Or if you find some of those uh, uh, masks in the actual patterns in the messages, you can drop the messages altogether if you so choose. Um, a whole bunch of other moderation extensions like reporting messages or users, sentiment analysis, it allows you to run AI powered sentiment analysis on these messages and it will respond with the probability of uh, positive or negative sentiment. Um, also uh, security and safety is so like malware scanning, uh, XSS filtering, end-to-end -end encryption, disappearing messages. So if you have sensitive data that you want people to see, but you're worried that if it sticks around, um, it would be uh, detrimental to the use case. You can have these messages, uh, you enable this uh, disappearing messages and the messages disappear within a specific time frame. Um, and so uh, again, a rich set of extensions you can simply enable in the dashboard here to get the best of uh, the experience of Comet Chat. Um, another really exciting feature is webhooks. Uh, you simply configure a new webhook. We have several webhooks before message, which means before the message is delivered to a user, you would get a call to your webhook and you can intercept that message. And again, you can either alter the message or drop it completely or an after message webhook. So once the user has received the message, you would get notified of this message on your webhook and you can take action, like integrate that into a third party system. Um, and then also we have presence webhooks. So if you have some uh, third party uh, systems or an internal use case that you have where you wanted to uh, present some behavior based on users logging in or logging out, you can receive these webhooks uh, on the uh, presence, when basically the user logging in and logging out or logging in on a new device or logging out of a device. Uh, we also have bot, a bot interface, so you can uh, reply as an unnamed user as a bot. Um, and so I think that's a, a pretty good rundown of the set of functionality provided by Comet Chat and, and configurable within the dashboard. Let me jump over really quickly and show you um, some of the use cases that we have uh, in our demo here. And so uh, a couple of these I like to demonstrate are live events, community and healthcare. I think the, um, you, you see here the live events use case. So basically we'll log in with one of these users. I it's not using any password login. It's automatically done for us just for this demo. But um, if we were to pick Linda, um, you'll see Linda loads up and there is a specific uh, group that has been configured for this specific live event. And so this group is being shown. This is a group conversation for the live event. So anybody who joins the live event will be put into this group. There are six members in here now. And so anybody who joins in this would get put in here and be able to chat with each other about this uh, live event. And I mentioned earlier live reactions. You know, this is what it looks like, live reaction. You click this button. You're used to emojis. Um, so, you know, we do have emojis that you can uh, use obviously, but also um, you can do live reactions. We just have implemented in this use case, the, the heart or, uh, live reaction. And then also, um, not only do we support these text messages, so, um, you know, this, this is a text message. Um, we also support, uh, uh video voice, uh, documents, uh, images, um, links, uh, all, uh, types of rich media messages as well. And I also mentioned uh, really quickly, I'll show you here, um, you know, you can start a collaborative whiteboard session. And so you just launch this whiteboard session and uh, you can hop into this whiteboard session. So let me go back and show you real quick. I just showed you that um, I was drawing on that board. If you were on the other end of this uh, chat, you would have been able to launch this as well. You'd see the same uh, launch icon, you could launch that. But if we go back here and log in as, let's say John, um, John would actually have seen this being drawn uh, in real time, but it also is preserved through the life of this group. So until such time that this group uh, is deleted, this uh, whiteboard is available to anybody. So you can collaborate and have a record of that collaboration in your chat history as well. It's pretty exciting. Um, so what we're demonstrating here is also that 
um, we have we have the ability to constrain the interaction or interface here. So this is a group. You don't have the ability to interact with any user. Um, oh, here you can react to these as well. So these are um, specific reactions on the messages. Um, so that's a pretty exciting thing. It's not just a, an emoji in the chat, but um, specifically on the message. Um, you can reply. So we have threaded replies. Um, you can reply specifically to the threaded message um, or delete the message. So um, what we're showing here is the constrained view. So um, this is a specific group. You do not have the ability to, and I'll show you this in just a second. You don't have the ability to uh, interact with other users randomly or create new groups or you're in this group purposely for this uh uh, event and you can have any group purpose you know whatever the group purpose is tied to the user experience within the application um, so if we go back say to a community i'll show you where it's there's a different user experience which is um, and this is not the widget but if you saw in the dashboard i was able to configure both which of these were enabled and disabled and then what order they appeared in so in this UI, we've we've coded this into this UI versus using the widget, but um, this is the chats. So whatever chats you've been in, this is group chats and then one-on-one -on -one chats. And as I mentioned here, um, you know, I've logged in now as Linda and you can see this whiteboard here as well. So anywhere that that user logs in to this application and is accessing those conversations, the same information is presented. And so um, before you could not see the user list. There is a list of users I could interact with. So um, I could uh, converse directly with Jimmy Choo or um, again in these groups. Um, an interesting thing is we do have uh, password protected groups. So if you wanted to create a new group, um, another protected group. Uh, you can do that and select the group type of password protected and then enter in a password and then anyone who wants to join this group would be required to enter in a password to join into that group. Um, also you can see here um, the uh, voice and video calling. If we were to go back and look again that uh, that group interaction and the live, the live streaming circumstance didn't really necessitate having voice and video calling enabled but in this use case we would want to have the ability for our community users to get in touch with each other in a more rich way than just text chatting where they could do voice and video calls. And that actually is a really good use case uh, in terms of the healthcare, uh, like telehealth use case, uh, where you can actually have uh, telehealth sessions through voice and video calling. And so um, you can see here another view where this is one on one direct chat embedded in the use case uh, here. Similarly, how we had the group chat embedded, now you have group chat between this user who's logged in and the specific doctor that they've selected. And so this isn't a group chat, this is a private one-on-one -on -one chat between uh, the patient and the doctor and also the, the voice and video calls would be as well. And so you can see here, this would preserve the history so you can have a history of the conversation between uh, the patient and the doctor. You could also uh, configure this such that you had session-based chat so that this chat was actually specific to a visit potentially. And then you basically just have in your appointments, you would have a specific uh, chat session related to those specific appointments. So um, I hope this is demonstrating a lot of the functionality that uh, Comet Chat provides through our UI kits, our APIs, and our widgets, and the ab ability to manage that all through um, either the dashboard for the widget or through um, customization of the code and experience in uh, these kind of specific use cases. So thanks a lot for allowing me to do this demo. I hope that was helpful. Look, thank you very much, Scott, for, for talking to us. And um, yeah, let's see if we can, we can build up some examples for people to kind of use and play around with. It'd be kind of great to see. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks for um, chatting with me, Tony. I appreciate it. Great stuff. All right. Thanks, everybody.